things are certainly hotting up in the VR market in 2023. We've seen a variety of new headsets announced and more to come, which will include Apple's first venture into the VR MR market, with an announcement expected on the 5th of June during the Worldwide Developers Conference. As we've come to expect, Apple are playing things close to their chest, and most of the information out there at the moment is pure speculation. And of course, Apple have a reputation for being innovative and doing things differently. One thing we can be fairly confident of, however, is it won't be cheap. So likely to be aimed at the enthusiast level, and I suspect but could be wrong with a strong focus on augmented reality and mixed reality formats. Suitability for specific applications are unknown, and we'll just have to wait for the announcement and the subsequent details to be released. Knowing Apple, it could be a damp squib or completely shake up the market. One to keep your eye on. One headset that we do know a little bit more about is the MetaQuest 3, announced yesterday, with further details coming at Meta Connect, scheduled for 27th of September. No firm launch date at this time, but it's likely we'll see this in October 2023. And this is what we know so far. Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching, and let's get started. Firstly, a quick word from this video sponsor. The most expensive component in your VR headset are your lenses. Protect your lenses and your eyes with lens inserts. VR Wave can make lenses to your prescription, or maybe you don't wear glasses but want to protect your lenses. Then look to get blue light and anti-glare filter. This will reduce stress on your eyes, reduce the chance of motion sickness, means you can stay longer in VR. VR Wave produce lenses for most VR headsets. Link in the notes below. The Quest 3 appears to be a generational leap from the current Quest 2. And this exploded view gives us a few more details. On the bottom of the headset, on the left appears to be a volume control, and on the right, an IPD adjustment wheel. And flanking either of these are two IR cameras to aid with positional tracking. The three pill-shaped housings at the front of the headset hold a further two IR cameras and two color pass-through cameras for AR, MR applications. And the one in the center is the depth sensor, once again to enable mixed reality applications. Of most interest to the VR headset is it uses pancake lenses, with a higher resolution than either the Quest 2 or the Quest Pro. They say it's the highest resolution headset Meta have produced. This means it has a slimmer and smaller form factor but not necessarily lighter. Details on that were not provided. Details on the lenses were not published, but I think it would be safe to assume that it's LCD due to its price point. And once again, we don't know whether the LCD will be two separate or a single panel. Resolution details were also not published, but it is expected to be 20 to 30% higher than the Quest 2. If that turns out to be accurate, then that will elevate this headset's resolution to equal or exceed that of the Pico 4 and the HP Reverb G2. And as it uses pancake lenses, this indeed could be significant. No details were provided on the field of view or FOV, but I do expect it to be better than the Quest 2 simply because of the pancake lenses, and you can get your eyes closer. How much of an improvement? Well, I don't know at this time. Like its predecessor, it will be a standalone wireless headset. And for PC VR applications such as Microsoft Flight Simulator, a link cable will be required. From a standalone point of view, it has been significantly upgraded in terms of performance, roughly times two, with a bespoke Snapdragon processor. Worth mentioning, just for clarity, no DP port. Another interesting point are the controllers themselves. Similar in design to the Quest Pro, but they don't have any cameras, and more noticeably, no tracking ring. Where the sensors are and how they track is not clear, but again it'd be interesting as advances in tracking technology continue to develop, and the controllers do have built-in haptic support. And Meta say it supports hand tracking straight out the box, something I'm very interested in. The sound option chosen seems to be the same as the Quest 2 with slits in the strap, and as expected there is a proximity sensor in the headset. The MetaQuest 3 will be backwards compatible with Quest 2 in terms of games, 
and like its predecessor, it will come with two different memory options. 499 US dollars for the 128 gigabyte version and the 256 gigabyte version will be more expensive and I'm estimating 599. Not sure if they've published a price for that one yet. The Quest 2 and Quest Pro will get an upgrade shortly, boosting performance by up to 20%, which is great news. Also of interest, the Quest 2 will get a price drop. Prices returning to their previous levels, with the 128 gigabyte now falling to 300 US dollars and the larger memory version at 350 US dollars. And personally, it's great to see something back at that price point. The Quest 2 is currently the most popular VR headset in the market, and it's also found favor in the flight simulation genre. So the MetaQuest 3 is a welcome addition for VR pilots and could provide that perfect balance between price and performance that we all seek. What are your views on this upcoming headset? Something you're interested in? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon, and bye for now.